What's up? This is uh, Tinkle Time. This is uh, Chris Tinkle. I'm here with my uh, guest and a good buddy, Mr. Uh, Kyle Rinder. What's up, man? What's going What's on, up, dude? dude? Nice How's to be going? here. Thanks for having me. You guys are all, this is all, hey, guess what? We're all meeting each other for the for the very first time because me and Kyle have like hung out in uh, online and in uh, VR several times, but we have yet to, uh, I think we talked on the phone once also, but yeah, but we yep. haven't actually met in person. It was like, you know. I mean, make sure this goes well. I had to put on like uh, five layers of shirts. <laughs> it's nice. so cold here, dude. Is it so, really? Yeah, we bought like a space heater for the, yeah, because we have this like giant garage and it's like a studio and other shit, but uh, no space heater, dude. We just totally spaced on it and got one and it shorted out everything like twice. So was, so shit. we have to fix it. So I'm just like trying, I had like a park on earlier. I'm like, all right, we're going to shoot now. I took it off and like. Hold my fucking freeze my nuts off. All right, dude. Uh, what's up, man? How's it going? Good, man. How are you? Happy, uh, happy uh, Monday, or as my friend uh, calls it, um, happy Sunday part two. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't mind Monday I, so much, actually. It doesn't. Well, yeah, once like the uh, quarantine started happening, it, Monday does feel like Sunday too a lot, I think, sometimes. That's fair. I lose complete track of time. I don't even know what day it is until you told me <laughs> it was Monday. I've got I got three jobs and I got a daughter, so I don't know what hell I don't know what day it is. Oh, nice, dude. Yeah, man. Let's uh. So let's just uh tell the world how we know each other. So, uh, I'm a big fan of VR. I talk about it all the time on both the shows I do, and uh, I was all stoked to do this. Like uh, my buddy Al uh, from uh, Al Gonzalez from my uh, San, San Francisco comedy days hits me up and I oh dude are you into VR like, and I was like bro. And he started telling me about VR and I have like this like track of my new album about VR porn. And I'm like, dude, this ain't my first <laughs> nice. rodeo, Al. I, <laughs> yeah. I got this, dude. And then he was like, oh, shit. So then like uh, he uh, put me in uh, touch with you guys and you guys uh, run the show. It's a uh, failed to render comedy club and it's on alt space VR, which is an app in the uh, Oculus uh, form. And then is it also on uh, in the other yeah, it's on your, you got Vibes, you got Indexes out there, okay. you got Quest 1, 2. Uh, I think that's the majority. Yeah, I had someone who was like, oh, can I watch it on my uh, Google Cardboard? I'm like, oh, you mean your porn watcher? <laughs> no, you can't. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, don't try to get, yeah. <laughs> Anyone who was like, oh, I bought this online, I'm like, yeah, just play sure the game, did. dude. I know, <laughs> yeah. right? So, Man. so uh, yeah, so you guys... Uh, once the quarantine happened and, uh, you guys open up a comedy club in VR and then I want you to take it over. So how did yeah, this sure. like come about, man? Yeah. So I've been doing stand up comedy for about mm, five, six years now. And, uh, during quarantine, all my friends were looking for work and people started doing these zoom shows, kind of like what you and I are doing right now. Right. Um, but then you flood the screen with 50 people lagging. And I saw Big Al do it. I saw some other comics that I know do it. And I just was not feeling it. I'm like, I don't ever want to do this. I'm just not, I'm not into it. But I'm, I have a really rich history in VR. And I was bored, you know, getting lonely, maybe three weeks into quarantine, opened up a few social apps. I went into VR chat. It's like 4chan VR. I didn't go back, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Then I open up Alt Space, and everyone kind of looks like Slender Man, but it seems more chill, like there are adults partying and having fun, like as if it was a real club or bar. So I went to this house party, and um, then they also have like Cards Against Humanity in there, which is the easiest way to to play a game with random people and just have a social experience, which was really cool. Um, but I met this guy at this house party. He's a big blue robot. His name was Nappy, and for some <laughs> reason it said we were friends for nine months, and I'm like, I don't know this guy. And I walk up to him, I'm like, it says we've been friends for 11 months. And he looks at me and he's like, yeah, you're a really good friend. <laughs> I was like, all right, all right. <laughs> okay, yeah, you're a funny, funny guy. What do you do? He's like, well, I build all space worlds. You're actually in one of my worlds right now. What do you do? And I was like, well, I did stand-up comedy. And he said, oh, cool. How about we open up a stand-up comedy room? Just like that. I was like, what, dude? No, nah, I was kind of skeptical about it. And then he uh, he threw a little stage together in his little house party, and uh, I started inviting people in. Man, I invited Big Al in, and uh, Rafael Molina were the first ones to come in there, and they were just on a keyboard and mouse. You know, you can play the game on a keyboard mouse if you want to, and uh, Al saw the potential immediately. 
he went out and bought a Go, an Oculus Go immediately, upgraded to a Quest 1 and 2, and here we are. And now I've got all these comedians across America. We've got them in Italy. We've got them in Canada. They're everywhere. Mexico, it's crazy. UK is so awesome, dude. Yeah, and and it's not because, I mean, dude, you nailed it exactly with those Zoom shows. I did one, and it was only because I was contractually obligated to do it it was like this like big like big show in the theater. And I was like, I already got paid half. So there was no way mm. for me not to do it. And so, and it went horrible, dude. <laughs> so, <laughs> so oh yeah, it was that. So as soon as I, I mean, I remember, uh, so I should be clear, dude. So this experience and this, th- it is so real, dude. Mm-hmm. It is so real. And I remember when I got in there, I didn't know what to expect in, um, in this alt world. And I get in to the, uh, to the stand-up comedy club. And first of all, there was like this like bouncer there. And I just started laughing immediately that there was a bouncer because I recognized that he was behind a podium and the bouncer. And then I realized I was like talking to him and he's trying to get me to, to move out of the way so the people can get through. And I was like, dude, <laughs> this is just like real life. Dude, every comedy club I go to, I see the guys at the door. I'm like, oh, what's up, dog? And I'm always in the way. And people have to tell me to move. I'm like, dude, this is exactly what it like. And so the, already then I was already kind of like weirded out. And then I, when I was getting ready to go, uh, go up, and and by the way, spoiler: the first time that we tried this did not go well. I believe the second time didn't go well, but I believe we're on a streak now. I believe three oh, yeah. times with no interruptions. With yeah, this, uh, oh no! The first time I tried, the, I tried though, it was all I shorted out, right? Oh my! It was yeah. on my birthday. It was, was the first time. Man. Yeah, I had never gone to. I never missed a show before my birthday. I said it's my birthday. The guys can handle it. And Al's like, man, Chris Tingle's coming on. It's gonna be awesome. And there I am at dinner, like. Looking at my phone, like stressing out, like, oh man, <laughs> <laughs> everyone's lagging. Oh my god, why am I not there? Yeah, fine, yeah, no, but um, but like the experience, uh, as soon as you have it dialed in, now it's totally, you know, totally fun. But so I was gonna say, when I was getting ready to go on stage, I had that feeling that I'm like, am I gonna shadow box like a douche? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I look at that as some, that's like Friday early show. And I was kind of nervous too, because I hadn't done a set in a while. But that's like a, a, a like testament to how awesome it is, is I really felt like I was at a, a show. Because you really are, even though you can't, you, you can't see features. I was telling people that the, uh, that the hands and the neck, you can still, you can read body language. It's re- like, yeah. I caught myself reading body language. And then, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's really fun, man. So I feel like your- I feel like what it, what it really is is I always say it's like seventy five percent reality, you know. And honestly, inside of a place like that, your personality shines a lot more. Uh, there's a lot of people that just aren't self conscious in there because you're a cartoon character. So it's a lot easier for some people to be an extrovert if they're an introvert in a place like that. You know, it's crazy the way the mind works, but it it really feels like a, a comedy club. I mean, it's almost the exact same thing. Yeah, and then uh, you guys have a uh, an awesome touch where uh, the bouncers are uh, Mario and Luigi. Luigi. And dude, the last so I think I have video of it. The last set I did, I think I made a joke, and then there was some person who's being a little asshole in in mm. the um, there's some kid or there's someone who's being a dick. And I just remember Mario, <laughs> Mario, and like Luigi, <laughs> the two bouncers, fucking swarmed on this kid like it was a real <laughs> comedy club. But it was a floating Mario and a floating Luigi. Yeah, and there's moments like that every time that I'm in VR that I have to like, oh, my, this is so funny. <laughs> I just literally just saw like them like break down this dude. Hey, man, you got to leave, son. And then they well, just, that's like, the, the cool part about it is uh, so that was a big hurdle at the beginning of it uh, because Nappy has been in all space for four years, and he always says, "Well, events are muted. You mute the audience and you let the person on stage talk." And I'm like, "That's not going to fly. There's no way I'll open up a comedy club unless I can hear everybody." So finally we started doing that and then we started hiring moderators and bouncers and just paid them a little bit of money. Um, and now we're pushing the boundaries of the game. We get 80 people in there and they're screaming and yelling and laughing and then the audio starts to bug out. So I've been talking to Altspace and Microsoft and they're actually trying to fix that problem specifically because of us and what we've done with the game. Oh, that's so sweet, dude. Yeah. Uh, that Yeah, dude, that's really... Uh, so... Can we explain what like Allspace is for? Because I'm uh, I'm 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 going to yeah. talk to my audience after five years old. So Allspace is is this um, 
area and you like touched on it earlier, but you can make your own world or your own clubhouse or your own. I think everyone starts off with their own house and they all look similar. You have a patio, but then you could, uh, yeah. So go ahead from there. It's so neat, dude. So essentially it's kind of like a video game development tool as well. Everyone makes the, the worlds in unity, just like you would with any video game on the market right now, unreal engine unity. It uses both. Uh, it's just a social platform. It, it's been, it's been around since, Oculus development kit number two, which was five years ago, almost went under water. You know, they ran out of funds. They were about to close the doors and Microsoft, ah, Microsoft said, ah, I'll buy it. Microsoft took it. They bought it. They didn't do a whole lot with it until the quest came out. And then they invested probably a million or two for the avatars that you're used to today. Okay. Oh, so you made some joke earlier were they like tall and thin and kind of like, Oh yeah. They, they oh, look really? pretty weird. I mean, they, they still did the trick. It was still immersive enough to pull it off, but everyone looked pretty weird. Yeah. The avatars look spectacular now. Yeah. So then, so we should also say that, so in all space, basically it's uh there's all these worlds and some are um, created from like the tools that they have. Right. And then, mm-hmm. um, Cause I, I got high one night and I was like, Oh, I'm going to make a goddamn amphitheater, dude. And then I realized it's like, I'm not going to make it. You know what? Why don't I just make a basketball hoop by my house? And then, and then we'll go from there. We'll see how long that takes me to right. figure that out, dude. But, uh, <laughs> so, so people make their own worlds there. And, uh, there's like, you can go into a, uh, to like a bar, someone made like a pub. I've never been, been to Ireland before. Someone made a pub, like an Ireland pub. And I'm like, yeah. dude, this must be exactly how it is. Like, it feels like that's probably, and stuff like that. So it's really, yeah. So then once you go into all space, then you can go around in all these different worlds. And are there private worlds too? That like, are there, there like are private there? worlds? There are public oh. worlds. You can find Ooh. McDonald's in there. You can walk in the Crash Bandicoot or. Oh, dude, I want to get some of these private worlds. They have remade so many PS1 games in there just for fun. Um, you have events like ours. Uh, Burning Man was a huge thing this year. Burning Man yeah. was 100% digital and. Microsoft pushed a lot of money into that. Uh, the only thing they ever pushed money into when it came to events before that was Reggie Watts. Yeah, um, I definitely want to talk. Like, yeah, so because of the pandemic, obviously, and the quarantine, and you know, can't be around each other, they had to uh, cancel Burning Man. So, like you said, they gave him all this money. And dude, I'm not a Burning Man guy. I think it's fucking douchey. I think a dude shouldn't wear if he's wearing a t-shirt, he should have on undies. And pants, he shouldn't have his <laughs> right. cotton balls hanging out. I'm, yeah. I don't know. I'm a grown up, dude. Sometimes, yeah. but Sometimes. Uh, so I'm not in that Burning Man shit. But dude, that okay. So they built a Burning Man, but dude, it's it's a work of art, dude. It really. I, I remember. I, I think I told you. I was like, I took two or three micro doses, which means it's technically not a micro dose anymore. I guess. Fuck whatever, right. dude. Yeah, that's a cool. Day. And then I, I stumbled upon there and do it was so it's like a work of art. Like, like those people really did an amazing job. It really is like, I've never been there, but I mean, the so finale awesome. of that event was there was about 4,000 people, I believe four to 5,000 that were all in VR headsets watching Diplo. And he was like a hologram. Remember when they did like the Tupac hologram at the Snoop yeah. Dogg show way back then? Well, it was yeah. kind of like that, but they imported Diplo's face into all space and then diplo had a hololens on which is a five thousand dollar piece of microsoft equipment that people usually use for doctors you know um doing surgery but he actually could see the audience in front of him even though he could still have his dj rig in front of him a lot of money went into that event so i'm trying to talk to microsoft to see what we can work out dope yeah man that it's uh it's something else dude like um i went to the uh the uh world with like the giant like uh cone buildings yeah it's like the uh uh, yoga room i think it's like the calm mm -hmm. room and then when you stand in the middle it like messes with the sound and it feels like you're um in one of those like uh things if you go hello hello and the person can hear you over there (laughs) yeah it's the spatial audio is real in there dude i couldn't believe it i was like oh and yeah i was losing my mind it was so cool and i'm not like i said not into that and then i remember one night i like ended up in a rave yeah. I was like, what's this rave? And I went in there, and before you know it, guess who had little little r- fucking he fire did. sticks? Little rainbow <laughs> fire sticks, dude. Yeah, dude. I was like, I was trying to like flip them because I watched some people, yeah, like do some tricks, but uh, I don't know any tricks. Yeah. I guess that's so, really when I thought that it felt so real to so open up the comedy club, and I finally said yes. Was I went to a rave too, 
I, I played Cards Against Humanity with a bunch of people. Everybody was funny. Everyone was laughing. Then I went to a rave. Then a house party after the rave. And I'm like, oh my God, I just, I just went across the world. I didn't have to spend a dollar and I'm right next to my bed. You know, it was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's really like, uh, so let's like talk about that. So I've been, I've been a huge fan of VR as well for a long time. And now, you know, it sucks that, you know, VR is kind of like going to come in the mainstream because of, of the, you know, the pandemic and all that stuff. But if there was a better time for it, that's, it, this, this is like perfect now for people to like, Oh yeah. you know, you don't like, you, you don't, yeah, you, you don't have to feel like you're alone in, anymore. Like every time I've gone, uh, it was weird. I think I told you last time when I did that show, I've never felt like, Oh, this is like a little group of people, and we're all like, "Yeah, yay, we're all, all space." I never felt that until after the one set, and like I remember, I was like walking around, you know, I was fucking doing my fire stick dances, and people <laughs> were like giving me a little thumbs up, and I'm like, "Oh, hey, oh, this caught me fucking <laughs> doing the yeah little move." Yeah, yeah, man. So, so what was your um your uh, favorite part of that Burning Man thing? I mean, the Burning Man thing. I think the coolest part about it was there was an overworld kind of like a real video game. Like you actually go to the overworld and you walk around the entire camp and then there are little mini experiences across the whole freaking place, which was the craziest thing because it could be just user created content. They didn't have to be fantastic worlds. They didn't have to be perfect. But one of them was literally just like a hot dog stand next to some bathrooms, you know? And it, that's, that was a whole space that people were hanging out in, you know? And then they would teleport back to the main world, go to a stage with the show. It was it was wild, man. Yeah. So, um, is that is that thing that you're talking about? So there was a <laughs> there was this thing that they had there. There's just a bunch of RVs. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. like yeah. And it looks so real. It's all they're RVs. And all dusty. Yeah. Yeah. It's a campground, and it looks so real. I remember I was taking photos of myself in it because I was like, dude, this looks so funny. It looks like I'm camping. Yeah. So. <laughs> and I told myself, I told myself, I said, I'm not going to teleport. I'm going to walk. And oh my god. I had uh, walking from one camp to another camp, which was just like real life. It took like 20 minutes to walk across this virtual plane to get to an event. I was like, that was nuts. Just walking to people, walking around and talking to people along the way. Hey, what's going on? I met people from Japan, uh, people from Mexico, people I'd never, they're like, hey, burning man, burning man. It was the coolest thing, dude. It was crazy. Yeah, that, that was, um, what was I going to say? Uh, uh, we just touched, oh, dude. Before um, uh, I forget, I just uh, may check my notes here. Let's talk about your uh, your experience making your uh, VR game because you're all because yeah. you're a uh, game developer as well. Well, I'm not a game developer. I'm a manager. I've been a manager yeah. my life. So I was the I was the CEO of this company. It was called Level Two VR. Um, it was about you know it's funny. It was about six years ago that what was your, what was your first headset? What was your first VR? Uh, the uh, Gear VR one. Okay. Yeah. So I had I had four development kit number twos. This is when the creator of Oculus was still in charge of it. His name was Palmer Lucky, really cool dude. Um, and I got four of them. That was two hundred bucks. Okay. I had two PC rigs, and then my buddies brought over two PC rigs. And the first experience I ever had in VR was four of us played Quake Two in the same room. It was nuts. Oh, we took off our headset and we were like, whoa. It finally got to the point where my buddy Justin just bleh, threw up. <laughs> it was just quite too, it was too fast. And we were yeah. just, it was nuts. It was awesome. Um, but moving down the line, uh, once I saw the potential of that, um, I sat down with one of my really good friends and his dad actually used to be the head of Corona marketing for 15 years. Uh, so he was very well in touch with marketing and people with money and things like that. And I originally wanted to open up a VR arcade, which is what I really wanted to do. I'm glad I didn't because all of them went under during COVID. VR is at home yeah. now, unfortunately. Um, but my investor was like, hey, man, just make a game. Let's just make a game and start there. And I was like, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll go through that. Uh, so I hired a couple of game developers. Uh, they were very touchy people, uh, to say it in the nicest way possible, very... Uh, special people, really cool, very helpful. Give me the money, give me the money, kind of hungry people, right? And we worked on this idea of a zombie game where the main character was at the Battle of the Alamo and the Battle of the Alamo was happening. And his name is Monsignor Santiago. We named him and everything, okay? 
And basically what happens is during the Battle of the Alamo, the apocalypse hit. And then he was the only one that survived. And now all the Davy Crockett hats and all the different types of hats are going through this field and they're all zombies. And he has to defend the Alamo against all these crazy ass zombies. It was a lot of fun. That's dope. Yeah. Um, I'm going to put on some be real of that. That actually, wait, no, I think I have it right here. Jeez, Luis. What you got? I think I have the uh, video of the game there. I believe so. Oh, nice. Nope. I will do some uh, B rail later. No problem. All right. That was awkward. <laughs> no uh, All good. You know, hey, before I forget, uh, and, um, let me do a uh, commercial break for our uh, buddies at uh, Jaden's slash journey.com. Uh, they are the home of the uh, Jaden's Juice, which is uh, worldwide known as one of the best CBDs. They've been featured in a documentary on Netflix called. Cultural high, really cool dude, really cool story. He made this company because his uh, son was like suffering from all kinds of seizures and then he like built this CBD and then it actually helped him, his son and a bunch of other people. Uh, really cool dude, I've known him a long time, great dude, great company. And now uh, if you are in the Central Valley area, if you uh, use their, go to jaden slash journey.com, you'll get 10% off your entire order for delivery and I believe it's a 25 mile radius, so. All right. And now, oh yeah. And by the way, uh, we do use all their products. So this is the one podcast I guarantee you that we use all the sponsor stuff that they give us. <laughs> I can a hundred percent guarantee you. Probably too quick, actually. We probably use it faster than we should, to be honest with you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, that being said, so your game came out on the uh gear VR, right? Yeah, and it was a it was a pain to get out there. The building a game was easier than getting it approved to be completely honest with you. Getting it approved through Oculus is a real pain. Um, but in the end, they ended up making a lot of artwork for us for free. They oh, told that's us cool. exactly what we need to do to get it on the store. It was very early. Um, so that's we finally really cool. got it on the store. I think so. Yeah, uh, it had great reviews when it first came out. You know, it was like a 4.5. And then what Oculus did was they put it on the Oculus Go. Now, what people don't know is the Oculus Go was the first one with the controller. Okay. Gear VR, you're tapping the side of your head and you would shoot by tapping the side of your head. They didn't ask me if I wanted it on Oculus Go. They just put it on there. So then all these people have their controller. They're like, this game doesn't work. Now it's like a two. <laughs> you know, because their Facebook never told me they were going to put it on there. In fact, they should. Oh, that have. sucks, dude. They just, yeah. <laughs> they, just, dude, they just bait and switch me. Yeah, yeah we're going to put it on there. Whatever. But I also find that funny how like how people played it, how like someone's like, oh, these guys didn't think about how to. No, they did. Uh, use your heads, everybody. Think about it. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, they they're desperate for know. content back then. Yeah, that's all. So, um, uh, have you been behind any other games or any kind of um? Other, actually, we should probably explain the the uh, Gear VR for people who don't know. That was the um, Samsung back one. That was the one that you put your uh your phone in. The uh, yep. a Note Galaxy. 4 S6 yeah. S7, all those yes. worked in it. He just popped it in, which it was cool. But then, like, I remember I let a friend one, one time use it, and my girlfriend was texting me a bunch of hateful shit. <laughs> and he just <laughs> took off the mask after like two minutes. I was like, dude, you need to take care of this. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. I need to take care of it. Yeah. By the way, by take care of it, I just made tell her stop, not fucking. Yeah, offer. Okay, I should be clear. My friends well, playing I, oh. on my cell phone. I need you to stop. <laughs> I know, right? So great. Uh, so, uh, yeah, any other apps or anything uh, you guys were involved in? Yeah. So after after level two kind of dissipated, uh, we made we made a pretty pretty good amount of money. We made double the amount we put in, which is pretty solid, right? Um, and but we still it still got dissipated. The the investor didn't see the potential, and I'm like, I told you we should open up a VR arcade. Anyway, so I, I did a lot of things in Austin. Austin was the place to be for virtual reality when it was first coming out, man. We had the best community in Austin, Texas. Met a lot of cool people. Met this dude named Finn Staber. Uh, he actually started the Wave VR, um, which is huge now. He's, he's, he's still a part owner of it. It's basically that app where um, performers can perform DJ stuff or right now The weekend is in there doing stuff. They got John Legend in there doing stuff. 
they're just live concerts with live people watching them, which is super cool. But he moved on from that and he made a game called Baby Hands, which is kind of like a <laughs> VR Rugrats game where you're literally using your remote controls to crawl around. And, oh, uh, so you're like a baby. Yeah, you're like a baby and you grab you grab all the toys and play with the toys. It's it's oh, a trip. People people dude. love it. I kind of uh, wish so, I drink so I can get hammered and play some baby <laughs> crawling. Be a game. Baby. Yeah. <laughs> so his company is called Chicken Waffle. And after level two dissipated, he brought me on to do some marketing and things like that. Um, got some really good connections, went to Las Vegas CES 2019 with him, had a lot of fun. Uh, so Baby Hands was the first game that I helped push, and now it's Shadow of Baby Valhalla. Shade, Shadow of Valhalla is really cool, too. It's on Steam, and it's like okay. an old-school medieval zombie dragon game. Really cool. So how nerdy are you in the, in the VR? Meaning, do you have, like, one headset of each, and then you play different games? Because I know people who play games, like, if there's a higher res on one, then they'll play the game on that one. Are you one of those? Yeah, ever since I got the Quest 2, I, I never put on anything else. I had a vibe for a while, but it was just too pricey to keep up with. You, you got four cameras in your room. You have these big controllers, and you got a wire in the back of your head. Ever since I got a Quest 1, I was like, first of all, I'm never going to have a wire in the back of my head again. And then Quest 2 came out, and it was almost twice as powerful as the first one. So that's all I use now, just the Quest 2. Yeah, so the uh for anyone who's still confused, so the quest is the brand new, <laughs> so the brand new uh version of this Oculus, which is so now what's exciting is um uh you don't have to plug in anything, it charges, it takes uh I guess two or three hour charge and then uh lasts for two or three hours, I guess. Uh but there's no wires, and so you are truly um you're truly in. I mean, dude, you can wander off and get fucking smack into a brick wall. I've done it. Oh I've, yeah. I've do I I've I punched I wish I could tell you I've only punched one friend's daughter, but that would be an incorrect <laughs> statement, dude. Right, right. Dude, I, you know what's funny is we were on that one show and you were talking about uh uh that one uh drunk fight game that uh what's uh, the drunken bar, bar fight? fight. Yeah so I punched my friend's daughter playing that game. She Jesus. was running by and I just like coom, <laughs> and I just dude, mid-air, bro, like mid-air. Oh my but she was like a little baby. How are you supposed to be mad at you? No, she thought it was funny. No, she like boom and then landed. It was such a big thud. It sounded like like Mick Foley, baby. Yeah, dude. So bad. And then uh yeah. So that was really so what are your um your VR um uh errors? Any any awesome stories? Any uh broken televisions? Any broken windows? Um man, I I broke a controller playing drunken bar fight, you know. I bought the game. It was like 15 bucks. Like I got a six pack. I slammed it. And I was like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm immersed, you know? And, and then uh, there's Santa Claus in the grocery store. And I said, give me that PS5. Give me that PS5. I grabbed a shopping cart. And I threw it on it and just psh, broke my controller in half. So yeah, that's, that was a uh, good thing. I got the quest two one week later. Now the other one is just nice. a one hand slicer, you know, quest one dead in the water. So like, um, what other app? So, um, I just got into the, uh, social apps, like the all space and then that was never my, my thing. Really. I like to, uh, watch, um, the, uh, live sports, live boxing ones. Yeah. It's awesome on there. Uh, Oh yeah. Um, I actually, um, I just said on the uh, on the uh, live at Gotham VR show that was super fun, mm -hmm. dude. It was super fun live to like do it because they're like, oh, if you want to do crowd work, you totally can because it's in VR. And I was like, oh, That's dude, great. they like never let you do that, dude. It's kind, it's kind of cool. They never tell you, encourage it. So I mean, I didn't, you know, I wasn't gonna be an asshole and do the whole set like that. But yeah, it was definitely. So neat, are dude. you are you in one of those pre-recorded Gotham VR ones? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and. Uh, so I was really into that stuff. I'm really into the boxing stuff live. Are you into any of those things also? Any of the? Uh... I mean, I like the boxing stuff too. Yeah. Have you ever been to big screen? Have you been in big screen? Yes. Yeah. So uh, Dude, big screen some of those app events are nuts because they actually have 3D movies coming at you inside of VR. Have you seen that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nuts. Yeah. Well, that's one of the cool things about about uh, VR that people will also forget. Part of Part of the package of VR is if you are a fan of uh, movies, then they have like theaters and you can make your custom theaters. It, it like all depends on how much nerdy you want to get into this shit, but you can make you have your own theater 
And I think I told you guys on the show, I, this is when I was drinking like a while, like, while ago. And uh, I uh, got hammered and I was watching a movie. So I was in the theater in VR, but I was watching a movie. And yeah. uh, all of a sudden I woke up. It was like, I passed out. But I woke up, I was like in a fucking theater, in a movie theater. I'm all like, <laughs> what? Yeah. And the first like two glances, everything looked real enough for me to just be like, holy shit. Like I didn't, like I didn't buy a bottle. It was a few yeah. beers. Like what happened? But Dude, yeah, during so quarantine, I saw the craziest stuff. You think waking up in VR is crazy, man. I've seen people throw <laughs> up. I've heard babies oh, no. crying. I've heard dogs barking, you know. And this one guy, I'll never forget this one guy says, it's weird, man. I can smoke as much as I want. I can drink as much as I want. And when I'm in VR, I just can't tell. And he's like, hold on. I got to go get a beer. He took off his headset and I heard him fall down. <laughs> oh, no. oh, no. He came back. I'm like, you get your beer? He's like, yeah. Did you fall down? I did. Yeah. <laughs> it is neat. I've seen people stumble and, and I can tell that they stumbled in uh, real life. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of neat. Yeah, it's, it's pretty neat. Um, I think the coolest thing about the stand of comedy, too, is the pacing. If you... So for the people listening that don't know, whenever you open up the Oculus for the first time, you put it on, depending on the room you're in, you take your controller and you set your boundaries to where your wall and your furniture is, move out of the table and things like that. And if you actually set a space for yourself to do stand-up comedy, it's a lot different than using the thumbstick. If you're actually walking around, they can see your body moving in there. They can see your avatar. You can j jump and they can see it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, you know what you you know what's funny is that that's actually like, like a really funny tactic that I learned I think last time was I was like, if you do the thumbstick a little bit at like a punchline or in like uh, stamp something home, it looks really funny. You look like you're yeah. just fucking like floating, you're all da 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 da, blah, 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 like float right the, <laughs> right the crowd. It kind of because yeah, because by the way, you're also doing stand up comedy without any legs. So once yeah. you accept that fact, also, I kind of yeah. want legs though. I don't, I don't think I need legs again. You don't need legs. I mean, during during Halloween too, I was dressed up as Jesus Christ, and I turned on my fly mode, and I I went out there and I started flying around. You know, the sky's, really the sky's the limit with that kind of stuff, man. And uh, just imagine trying to kick somebody out of a comedy club in real life. It's a pain in the ass, and we've all seen it. It's super embarrassing. People get dragged out, or people leave, and you know when they leave, they stand up in front of you, they go back to that door, and they disappear. In here, if they're acting a fool or making noise, we just click their name and kick them. If you want to be a part of the show, then you don't have to be there. It's, I mean, it's it's a whole new it's a whole new world. It is funny when you're getting ready to go on and you're like kind of like half paying attention, or maybe I have the mask up so I can write something, and also you just hear someone be like, "Hey, no flying in here." We told you get like that's pretty great, dude. <laughs> yeah. And someone got in trouble for like making like a I don't know. It was, uh, Dude, what was it gonna? Uh, on Halloween, you guys did a really. Uh, you guys had the whole setup with the pumpkins and the smoke. That was pretty yeah. awesome. Dude, yeah. That felt like a real. That was crazy. That felt like a real. That was the one I, I think I told you. I messaged you and I was like, "Dude, you guys." That I felt like a show. Like I haven't felt like I've done a show since March, and that felt like. That's a show. awesome. Well, this Saturday you're gonna perform, right? We actually have a Thanksgiving version now, where the entire comedy club is full of leaves on the ground. Oh, nice, dude. Yeah, a couple turkeys. It's going to be cool. Oh, nice, dude. Oh, a couple turkeys. Oh, nice. Yeah, some, some live turkeys, some dead turkeys. They're all they're all 3D models. No animals were harmed. Is there any way that we could have like a virtual food fight? Or is that too much to ask? You can throw tomatoes. We can make that happen. Or like pumpkin pies at each other and like, or, or just like. Or did I fistful? Sorry, this is how, how my family partied. I don't know. I don't yeah. know what you guys do for Thanksgiving. Dude, so where um are you from, dude? Are are you from uh are you based out of Austin, Texas? Uh, based out of Austin, Texas now. I've been here for about four years. Born and raised San Antonio, not far away. That's where I met Big Al back in the okay. back about five years ago. Um my my deep dive into comedy actually came from my VR game. And when the doors were closing on it, um, I was going through a divorce because uh, I focused too much on the VR and not as much on my relationship, I suppose. And it all went to shit, you know. And my buddy, my buddy Roberto was like, hey, man, I, I go down and I, I do stand-up comedy. And I'm like, you're not funny. He's like, come, on, <laughs> come, come watch me. Just come watch me. I'm like, okay, cool. 
So we get there, I watch him, he's kind of funny. And he says, get up there, do it. Okay, cool. So I started doing it, started doing it. He stopped doing it. He didn't do it anymore. I kept going. And then that's when I met Big Al. And then Big Al was like, hey man, I'm new, new to San Antonio, show me around. I'm like, okay, I'll show you around if you show me some comedy. There you go. Oh, nice, dude. That's how, dude. Like, I, um, um, I just had my uh, friend Ryan Stout, uh, episode seven and eight. Uh, we pretty much started on the exact same time and we've been doing it for like 19 years. So we like, so uh -huh. we had that, we, we, we had that conversation where we don't think we would have been able to do it when you're new, especially in like a new space or anytime you have to shift, like especially when you're new at comedy because you're just like starting from scratch and it's just like politics and I don't know these people. Mm -hmm. And then also, oh yeah, don't forget, you gotta be funny. And then like, there's all this <laughs> other stuff that comes. So <laughs> yeah. So like you seem to really like latch on to those people that kind of like help you out. It was always, uh, there's some, some friends I still have on, on the East coast and they're pretty much the first people I met when I got there just cause it was like, you know, just nice new people like that. Yeah. Dude, big Al, man. He's a, uh, he's a uh, good peeps. I'm going to have him on here pretty soon. But oh, yeah, uh, man. Yeah, he's a, uh, he's a part of the company fail to render incorporated. We actually incorporated the company. We were doing so oh, well. Nice. nice dude. Hopefully, uh, are you guys thinking maybe upgrading Luigi and Mario's bouncer outfits? I was thinking maybe if we make them look like Super Mario, Super Luigi's, like like sure, a superhero yeah. style, like yeah, with we'll some fake muscles. Dude, speaking of muscles, have you seen fucking Chris Hemsworth? Because he's getting ready for Hulk Hogan. No, I haven't. Holy shit, dude! Is that happening. He's playing Hulk Hogan, so he's like uh, doing the workout, but oh wow, like bigger than the fucking Rock, dude. Like uh. we'll, okay. <laughs> What? As big, as big. He's okay. got like it looks like he shoved a fucking like I don't know like silly putty. Boom, boom, and boom. Jesus. It's so crazy. Like yeah, it's insane. And I just find it hilarious that you know, I, like crack that on drugs. It's like, dude, every superhero you guys are paying to see is on a bunch of fucking steroids. Wow, what movie is that going to be? Is it just going to be Hulk Hogan or what is it? Um, I believe it's the, yeah, it's like this bio, I think. I'm trying to find you the photo here. Um, yeah, he is fucking jacked. Oh, yeah, here we go. Let me. Uh, oh, no. Is it? Oh, wait, here we go. Oh, yeah, Chris. Here we go. Yeah, even, even like uh, his uh, co star. There you go. Uh, is it sharing? Oh, geez. What? <laughs> That's him, dude. That's yeah. him. That's wow. dude. Like he used okay. to be fat forward. Now we look at his fucking arms. And there's another one that's even like even crazier. But yeah, but that yeah, yeah like dude. three shoulders. Well, this is what I okay. So I'm gonna be like a total fucking wrestling nerd right now. Well, that's actually not how Hulk Hogan's body looked. Um, because all those guys <laughs> in the 80s. Because <laughs> no one was no one knew how to get that ripped until like 20 years ago and now everyone knows with diet and they know exactly how you can tune in but no one got that like you know like I, I think those are called uh restorations I think right here like those things like people couldn't get those unless you were like just like gifted with them from from Jesus That's but now I mean. it's because so in the 80s Hulk Hogan like he was buffed as fuck but he was never like I like mean that. so yeah that, that's, that's like that one chick when she played fucking Tina Turner and like she was just fucking jacked, and you're like, oh yeah, that was yeah. Tina wasn't doing fucking yeah, like weights like that, whatever. Yeah, he, dude, Chris. So uh, we always talk about on the show because everyone is on the teen in the teen, and they're locked down. So which um, what films uh, have you been into as of late? What films have I been into? Man, I don't have a lot of time to watch flicks, bro. I'm not gonna oh, lie but, to you. Uh, um, Mandalorian, right? You watched that? You were talking oh, about that? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> I digress, right? Uh, Mandalorian is awesome, dude. Uh, it finally took nine movies over the course of 30 years, but we finally got some good Star Wars content. Dude, I just remember what, what, like, I just wanted to watch the first episode over and over again because. Oh, man. It's, it's, it's the, it's the most badass freaking main character you've ever seen with the cutest sidekick ever. So, you immediately get all the hardcore yeah. dudes that say, oh, I want a jetpack, I want pistols. And then you get all the girls like, oh my God, baby Yoda's in a classroom. Oh, it's so cute. It's just the, the perfect mix. And it's just, uh, but of course the entire show is basically just a Dungeons and Dragons uh, role-playing session or 
Skyrim, you know, he's always trying to do the main mission is like, but first I need you over here. You know, yeah. it's always like side quest, side quest every episode. It's fine. Yeah, first I have to crawl, forever. crawl through like a snake monster's ass to grab this egg to feed the little <laughs> angry Jawas. And it's like, oh, so it takes 20 minutes to get through the snake monster's asshole. And then it's like a whole build up to that. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It does kind of have the Walking Dead thing where it's like every episode we're going to walk next door and find out that they're bad people. Fucking mm-hmm. come on, dear. Yeah. It has that a little bit. So, but uh, the first, se- the first, I've only uh, seen the first two. I- I'm going to wait because really? I was all I have to wait and just watch him fucking bang him out because it just pisses okay. me off if I have to wait like oh, yeah. a week to watch him. But the first episode with uh, Timothy Oliphant was amazing, dude. Oh, yeah. Once he was in all, that, I all was the cool. roles, every single role. I have not hated one character. Everyone is playing their roles so well. Yeah, except, and then, for, except for Pants Guy. Have you heard about Pants Guy? Who's Pants Guy? Well, in the last episode that aired last Monday, uh, there's a shoot off, and uh, it's one of the guys in the back scenes, you know, and uh, his jeans are like hanging out, and you see a foot and jeans just hanging out in the back of it's like shoot out. <laughs> oh no! The internet so fast they already made like, a fake Star Wars action figure like pants guy. <laughs> so it wait, wait so so what is it? Is this like a person sitting off camera? Yeah, yeah actual... he's a production guy. You know, he just couldn't stay out. Oh of the wow! Shop. Oh fuck, dude, that's really funny. <laughs> yeah, it's super funny. Dude, um, that is... What else am I doing? I'm watching Breaking Bad again. You ever watch Breaking Bad? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I watched I'm it. Uh, watch it twice, and I watched it when the uh, when the other show, when the uh, film Better drops. So, I, uh, no, no, um, I'm sorry. The uh, film with uh, the other character. Oh, the El, fat Jesse, fat Todd, El movie. Camino. El, <laughs> <laughs> you like that movie? Oh, it's so good. You like it? It was. It was. It was okay. Yeah, it was just kind of unbelievable that it happened in the time that it was supposed to because. Both of those characters are like 40 pounds overweight for what they used to be. That's all I noticed. I don't yeah, know. well, that's the bad part of Jesse getting all that Breaking Bad money is, you know, he, he's mm-hmm. had to treat himself to pizza. Yeah, for quite, sure. Quite a, quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that is fun. Yeah, I don't know. I, I really liked it, but that is fun. Yeah, he definitely looked different. Like, he, oh, he yeah. looked, yeah, I mean, he definitely... And I took he, a he, date he, to go see it. It was a Netflix movie, but... They had showings at the Alamo Draft House in Austin, Texas. So I decided to take a date, and it the date did not go well. It was not a movie movie. It was a Netflix movie, but it was not a spend hundred dollars at a movie theater movie. That's for sure. Oh yeah, dude! If you saw it at the yeah, theater, maybe that's, I'd be... maybe that's why I don't like it because I my expectations were here. And I went to see it in a movie theater, and then I walked out. Like, you also know in the back of your later. head. Yeah, and maybe you know in the back of your head also. You're like, dude, everyone else is watching this shit for fucking nine ninety nine. Some people have stolen passwords. <laughs> and this shit just cost me dinner, drinks, mm. and a dry dick, dude. Yeah, I get it. definitely. Yeah, and then Heisenberg comes on the stage, you know, and the entire audience are screaming like, Heisenberg! You oh, know? oh she, shit, he, he was actually was there? Like, well, no, no, no. I'm, I'm talking about like the one second he's in the film. Oh, okay, he okay, was okay. barely in the film, right? And the entire audience erupted and said, Heisenberg, like it was freaking... Optimus Prime in the first Transformers movie. You know, they're all like excited and she's like, I'm just not that excited. I'm like, oh, fuck. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, I digress. You're all, yeah, dude. Don't worry. She probably went home and told that story to her cats, but she changed all the info around, so then she was like the hero. (laughs) Um, I just watched this. uh, Oh, dude, have you heard of that movie? Uh, Okay, so I'm like a movie nerd, so I watch a bunch of stuff, okay. and I've just watched. Uh, there's a movie called Fat Man. Have you heard of it? No, it's just called uh, Fat Man. Mel Gibson is Santa Claus. This is a fucking down and dirty action movie. Mel Gibson is Santa Claus. He, he dude, I'm gonna try to get through this without giggling. He has <laughs> he he sells some of the uh, the elves to help out the uh, U.S. military make weapons. So they could, because they're running, because Santa's running out of funds, so they need to, uh, I fucking <laughs> swear this, to God. Is dude. this new? Yes. And and the guy, uh, Walter Goggins, who was, um, 
he played the uh, transgender in uh, Sons of Anarchy, which is one of the greatest, one of the mm-hmm. greatest roles. He was so good in that. And then he's also in uh, Vice Principals on HBO. That dude, he's like, okay. so this kid gets upset that Santa gives him a lump of coal and he hires a hitman to kill Santa. <laughs> so Santa's trying to get his groove back. And it's the yeah. guy who said he doesn't like Jews when he was drunk. It sounds like it sounds like an intense version of Jingle All the Way, like super intense version. <laughs> I need Dude, the I, man. I watched it just so I'd be able to talk about it. Yeah, because there was a sure. moment about twenty minutes into it where I'm like, "Oh, this isn't going to be like a surprise. This is a good movie. Mm-hmm. Like, it just wasn't going to happen." And I was, like, "Oh, okay. I'm in. I'm in the. I'm in this shit for the long haul." Fuck. Jesus. It was pretty bad, dude. But yeah, there's another true. movie that uh, dropped uh, uh, called uh, Boss Level with um, this is a, a really cool idea. It's 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 this guy who gets um, uh, it's like his last day on Earth. He's like this like uh, GI hero, war hero, and he gets killed, and he gets to like relive that day over and over again and go against the boss. Hmm. So basically, it's like a Groundhog Day, the uh, but it's like uh, more of a real action video game where it's like boss level. So it's like he, he gets to fight the boss over and over again. And that one also has Mel Gibson. <laughs> of course. <laughs> you see of course it, it does. Yeah. What happened to him, dude? I guess anywhere after you do a Jesus movie, it's all fucking downhill, dude. If you make $500 million off a yeah. Jesus movie. I want to see that Ryan Reynolds film that, that, what is it called? A single guy or free guy. The, the one where he's an NPC in a video game coming out. That one looks pretty cool. Oh, I don't know. It's I like a, get behind that. It's like it's, an, an uh, action movie? Like, or? He's like an NPC that wakes up and becomes a person and says, I'm in a video game. Why can't I not just do this and do that? So it's, okay. it looks pretty uh, cool. Yeah, it's an NPC, action comedy, you know. NPC is what again? Uh, a non-playable character. Non-playable like character, a computer, okay. A computer-generated character to just interact with. Like Grand Theft Auto Five, right? You go down the street and punch a civilian. They fall. You walk away. Well, he's like one of those. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, he but wakes now, up and he becomes a superhero inside this Grand Theft Auto world. So that's it's pretty cool. It looks awesome. So is it an animated movie or is it? No, it's 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 a hundred percent. Oh shit, dude. Okay. Humans All right. and some animation. Yeah, I think it's coming out on Christmas. Check it out. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's gonna come out. So are you? So I'm in California, and I'm in uh, yeah. San Jose near um, Silicon Valley. And uh, dude, we have no movies. Shit's not open, dude. I like. I remember I was so bummed out because that movie uh, with uh, Chris Nolan. They keep saying the ads like, "You have to see this movie in IMAX, or else you're a fucking bitch." I'm looking at you, Tinkle. Yeah. You gotta see this movie, <laughs> and dude, it's not playing fucking. In, I I every time I leave the house, which is very rare. I, yeah. If I'm gonna visit dad, or if I'm gonna do the random like show, I will like Google and see if there's any theaters around that are showing it. And so, so like it's funny as you say that, but it's like in California, it's like thank God HBO just gave in. They're gonna give us goddamn Wonder Woman 1984. Like Wonder thank Woman, God. yeah. Right. Yeah. I feel like I feel like HBO did a, a way better job of taking care of us than our government. Like HBO, <laughs> they're sad. <laughs> they're really sad, dude. We should give them a fucking little treat because. Stimulus clause, stimulus clause is well, not coming. You know, being in Austin, Texas, it's you know the little blue bubble inside of a big red state. We're we're still pretty locked down. Like, and the movie theaters are kind of like you have to reserve them with oh, like, okay. a shitload of people to actually go. So no, I haven't oh, been to a okay. movie theater oh, in over sorry. a year okay. either. Yeah, such um, a bummer, dude. I know. It's, weird how, it's weird that you take stuff, you know, for granted like that. You literally take stuff. For granted, oh, I remember yeah. like it's any time I blew off going out and doing something when I should have for fun, I want to kick mm-hmm. myself with a dick because I'm like, oh fuck, dude. Oh, I I'm love going to movie theaters. Even if my friends were like, I don't want to go, I'm like, fuck you, I'm going on release day by myself. I don't care. Are you are you also into like concerts too? Or are you into uh I mean I assume Austin's like in Oh dude, I am I am huge into concerts. The it's concert it's the number one thing that hurts me every single day. Yeah, man. Every month I would at least go to a huge concert and just support a lot of local DJs and acoustic sets and just it's all coffee shops now, you know, coffee shops outside, if they can do that. Um, it's all very confusing in Austin because Texas wants to open up, but we live in Austin. Uh so it's just very confusing. The comedy scene isn't yeah. huge. 
Um, Capital City shut down one of Austin's longest comedy clubs. Yeah, that's um, the only place I did. I did comedy in uh, in Texas. That's the only place I yeah. did. Uh, yeah, I did, I did Cap City. I featured for uh, Howard Kramer, and uh, he's nice. from there. He's from Austin, so it was really fun. It was like his like homecoming, so they're really good shows. But nice. yeah, I love that place too. I love those people there. I love the barbecue. I, I was really sad when that place closed, man. Yeah, so Cap City, great- Cap City closing really screwed with a lot of people's minds like oh it's really happening like not bad enough that south by southwest was canceled but then you're going to shut down the number one comedy club too okay all right austin you know yeah it's like uh it's yeah it's it's like people you know it's weird it's because our that's what i tell people all the time who i'm like i don't like like you guys just walk around like everything's fine but everyone i like literally nine percent of people i know are fucked or the and and the people who they're with are fucked and like, cause I was, you know, you try to explain to people, it's like most of people's side hustles are also involved in the business too. So it's like everyone's side hustle also got took a hit. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a hard time, man. It's um, especially for, uh, but dude, I'm telling you, man, stand up is back dude in VR. If you can deal with, with that Mario, he's kind of jumpy. <laughs> that was so dumb, dude. I didn't mean it like that. I used to be jumpy as in fuck, dude. I really going to punch myself <laughs> with the balls for saying that. I did well, not mean that. Really? Point. The only thing that about VR comedy is the lag, right? You're on AT and T. He's on Spectrum. He's on Comcast. Your normal one-two punchline is now like a one-two-three punchline. So you make sure everyone hears it. Zoom was obviously the same way. Hell, phone calls are the same way, you know. But there's just a lot of tricks to the trade. I mean, also it's called failed surrender because one, it's my last name, and two, everyone lags. So we kind of have to set the expectation, like you're going to experience the most amazing thing in VR you've ever experienced, but we're going to lag sometimes. It's going to be laggy, you know, but I mean, that's, that's like yeah. a new kind of heckler. You got to deal with a heckler in real life. I got to deal with lag. Just play off of it. Improv, you know? Yeah. And, and there's nothing funnier than, uh, than I remember, yeah, than when you were on stage and it lags in terms of your, your character moves. I remember one time I just like zipped off camera and I like shot across the room. And I just remember being like, fucking, whoa, like it really, felt, it really felt weird. I was like, how did I get over here? And then I like scroll back, like, eh, 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 eh. Yeah, pretty awesome. <laughs> pretty yeah, great, dude. Trip. Um, What else, dude? Well, so we're working on three you- different comedy clubs right now. Oh, that's we're going yeah, to so- have three more comedy clubs completely made from scratch. So people would have to really try really hard to duplicate our space and do what we do right now. Nice. So also, though, let's all, uh, I don't know if he's talked about it, but you guys, Friday night, so Thursday is the um, New Face Showcase, which gives a bunch yep. of people uh, seven to ten minutes, and then you get a bunch of people on, which is dope. Every comedy club needs a uh, good showcase. And then Friday, mm-hmm. you guys do a um, international show, which is really dope. I don't watch because I'm grumpy, so I don't really watch a lot of stand-up comedy. But I that is one that I definitely want to want to go into because you guys have comics from uh, Europe and Australia, yep. correct? Mm-hmm. Is it so, so? Do the crowds know? So are there more European fans? You think who go to that one, or do you think, or do you think just people just go? They I think it's still mostly America. Um, okay. So I've been I've been working with this guy named Hayden Douglas out of Australia, really funny guy. He's a rapper, really cool. And he he's basically like my equivalent or Big Al's equivalent in Australia. He got a headset. He's like, hey man, you gotta jump in here. So first it was just Hayden, then it was Hayden's girlfriend, Sean Choice, and then it was his friend Cameron McLaren. And now now we're like rotating 15 different comics. They're finally getting their own headsets because they, I mean they all believe in it. And uh, Friday's really the night where I like to say, like, this is Australia's show tonight, you know, or we're going to have a special guest from Canada. Um, we're going to have special guests from Mexico, you know, and kind of push everything besides USA, because as Americans, we've pretty much had it with ourselves, you know. Yeah, dude, maybe it's time for us just to shut the fuck up for a couple little bit and let, let everyone else kind of because uh, we because we certainly thought our shit didn't stink, dude, but we're. Dude, it's so embarrassing. I'm. It's so embarrassing. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's, it's I, I, hey man, I can't I can't complain, man. VR has been there. I've been waiting for the VR push since I had my video game out there. And oh, as yeah. soon as oh. everyone was locked down in quarantine, I'm like, here it comes. Here comes the VR boom, you know. So what is your favorite um overall experience in, in VR? I know that you like that game uh Pixel Ripped uh oh, 1995. But yeah, is there nice. um any other any other uh, game? I mean, about um, Beat Saber, one of those? Of course, dude. Beat Saber's been around for four years now, and it's just gotten better and better and better. And uh, I mean, but now there's a lot of clones of Beat Saber, and a lot of them are really good. Uh, one of them is called Audio Trip, which is just almost as good as Beat Saber. It's right there, and you're more. It's more like dancing, though. You know, Beat Saber feels like you're playing Star Wars meets Dance Dance Revolution. Yeah, uh, I actually audio, play that audio, game. Audio, yeah, I, I actually turned it off because I felt I was like, wait, am I dancing? I was like, <laughs> I was like, dude, I didn't want to dance. I wanted to do some like because you I can get like a 20 minute workout of Beat Saber. If I if I'm like, you know, if I'm really in it and I don't think anyone's watching me, I, you know, if I have my space in the in like a workout area, I'll let yeah. it go, dude. I'll, I'll let I'm it go. Yeah. There's, there's one called Supernatural and it actually is like yes. a gym membership. You pay twelve dollars a month. And unlike Beat Saber, when you start messing up in Beat Saber, it's like, oh, game over. And it kind of deters you from playing. But Supernatural actually has like the, the AR version of the trainer. And it doesn't stop whenever you start messing up. It's like, <laughs> keep going, keep going. And I took it off oh, after 30 going, minutes, Chubby sweating, Nets. sweating bullets. Like, oh, my God, that was a gym workout. It was <laughs> nuts. Nuts. It's all, are you going to give up, you little bitch? And you're like, dude, was that... Is that the R or is that my they do that just <laughs> that yeah. weird audio style where it sounds like your brain's like you're a little do I tell people yeah, like, all the time uh one of the coolest things uh, it makes me think that my brain is so dumb because it's like I know what's real and then all of a sudden I'll be like VR is so good it tricks you into thinking dude the first time I ever did uh and this is not gonna go graphic but the first time I ever yeah. uh, looked at VR porn Mm -hmm. first time I ever looked at it I like the scene was daylight like the window was open and it's just like ridiculously hot model and she starts like kissing the belly of the whatever and all of a sudden in my head I go oh I should we should close those blinds dude so no one can fucking <laughs> that's literally yeah. what I said and I was like what like first of all <laughs> dude I was just chilling talking to my friend and now I'm here with this model and my brain is totally like totally plausible bro Completely yeah. plausible. So, so on I, that note, when it comes to first time VR experiences, have you ever tried Richie's Plank experience? Yeah. So when, yeah, when, I was the first of, time yeah. I tried it, I went to CES and they had a big just lumber, just big piece of wood. They put you in the VR headset and they say walk it. And in the game, the the plank is coming out of a you know a 40 foot building. So it was helping people like get to VR, but also like, oh my God, like I'm afraid of heights and overcome some of that, which is really cool. Yeah. So the game is, I mean, unfortunately, you know, I mean, I think it's worth like the, like the 15 bucks because it's yeah. like everyone should do it at least once. So in real life, what you do is you get a, a plank and the game will allow you to enter those measurements. So whatever, I remember I was somewhere and I found, I think I just got the game where I just heard about it. And all of a sudden I looked down, there's like a fucking plank, dude. Like, like literally somewhere I'm like, oh, and this is way before COVID. So I was just grabbing shit that wasn't mine all the time. And I'm like, oh shit, all right. Yeah. <laughs> and you put it down and you step on that thing. And I put like a pillow in the front and a pillow in the back. Oh, dude, it was not, it was hella wobbly. And my girl was like, at the time was like, you know, have my shoulder just in case. But yeah, it was so scary. So you go up the elevator and when the elevator opens, all you hear is the sound of the city. And it's so weird. It feels like it's colder. And I know it's not because it's not. <laughs> yeah. Because like, it's all awesome. in your head. Yeah, but it's so crazy. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, wait, I got to fucking, I got to walk out here, dude. Mm -hmm. And you know it's not real, but it's still terrifying. Oh, yeah. Like, I can't play horror games because. Oh, dude, I love real. horror games. There's, there's one called Layers of Fear. Where it's kind of just like a Parasite Eve or Resident Evil or PT, where you're walking through a house, you hear a noise, you turn around, and all of a sudden there's just a brick wall there that wasn't there before. And you're like, 
That wasn't there, was it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really did. I don't like the pop the the pop scares. You know, those are those are dumb. But the ones that start like messing with your mind to the point you're like, I don't think I'm here anymore. I don't think I'm there. It's crazy. On that note, you know what's coming in December? I don't know if you ever played it back in the day, but Mist, the one that used to be on PC. Oh yeah, I had a friend who's really into it. It's gonna be oh, it's awesome. Gonna... I'm super oh, looking so forward to that. Is is gonna be one of those um sideload games or is it an actual sanctioned mist? Oh no, game? it's an actual game coming out, no sideload. Oh, oh yeah. man, I bet dude, I could They're wait making it from right scratch. Now, I could hear like nerds right now in, in like their fifties going, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hell yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we had Doom and then we had Quake. Fucking miss, mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah, I had a friend who he bought a computer that was so expensive, like back when that time, it was it was like just to play that game. And he was wow. obsessed with it. And I would drive like thirty miles to go hang out with him, <laughs> and he would just chain smoke cigarettes and just fucking play that game. And I, I mean, I never play it because I'm like, this is boring as shit. But it was fun, you know. He was into it. Yeah. But I mean, but in VR, it's like a different animal. It'll probably be uh, oh for sure. Badass. The chillest game I've ever played in VR is that Tetris effect. Have you played that? I have not played it yet because I was like 30 bucks for Tetris, dude. I We're know. A- $30 oh. for Tetris. What a goddamn pandemic, dude. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. 30 bucks for Tetris, dude. I was like, no, yeah. It's, I just it's thought- wild. It's wild. It's all the, the music builds up and builds up the more you get into it. And it starts getting really fast. But like it pulsates all these things around you. And all the environments are different every level and the music is like getting faster and faster and it's like different just like parts of the world there are different types of music across the world during these levels it's it's super chill i mean worth the 30 bucks i still play it i bought it like four months ago oh yeah so the, so that's what all kinds of people said when it first came out was i guess like the uh, graphics and I, I guess it was like please do shrooms and play this game and then mm-hmm. everything will like make sense in the world, <laughs> and I and I didn't know that that like uh, that was an actual thing. So the uh, game is called uh, Tetris Effect, and I didn't know that was a real thing. Like you could go to a psychologist, and it's the thing where people would see shapes like everywhere they went from then on because of the Tetris game. But it wasn't like a bad thing. It was just like wherever they go, wow. they would uh, see life as like Tetris, and so it's, it's called the. Tetris effect. It's an actual thing. And then, so they made this game. So wow, I didn't know that part. That sounds kind of scary. Yeah, It's an actual, I mean, <laughs> it could be only seven psychologists who are like, I don't know what's called Tetris effect. Fuck weirdo. Like, yeah. Basically. Just don't, yeah. It's just, all right. Just don't dry hump any trees in public. I guess that's better than <laughs> like a Tetris a lot is <laughs> better, better than that. It is dude. Sure. Uh, well, um, so what do you, so I had a friend on here who's a, uh, game designer for Sony Band, and uh, we were talking about the um, Renaissance because for me personally, I didn't play video games for a long time. I don't really play the Quest games all that much. Like, uh, I'll use it more for um, exercise, working out. Yeah. And, um, but uh, after the uh, after the pandemic, it felt like everybody in the entire country kind of like fucking looked around and were like, oh, that's right. Video games are dope, dude. And now we can do it. And not feel like an asshole, like you know, like we're not getting other stuff done because we have all this free time now in our hands. So, have you also noticed too, for someone who's been in the game industry, like like a huge uh, like uptick, right? Oh, dude, Twitch just by itself. I mean, you know, my mom and dad always said, "What are you doing with all your time playing these stupid video games? You'll never make money off that." And now people just, you know, pick up a new game, play Demon Souls on the PS5, and make all their money back that they just spent on a PS5. It's absolutely nuts. How big gaming's gotten, and it's just normal now. You know, when you and I were growing up, it was not normal. We were nerds. We were the nerds. Yeah. And now, and now, being a nerd is almost hot. Like, oh my god, he probably has money because he's streaming on Twitch. It's nuts. Isn't that, dude? That's like a, it's like a fucking job now, dude. It's, it's, oh, it's it crazy. Yeah. And it'd be so strange to be like a parent right now to be like, well, yeah, you could probably do that, pro. But there's all you know, it, it seems it'd be like what you know. I mean, you're right. You're right. You should practice all the time if you want to be pro, but not video yeah. games. It's a weird. It, it would be a oh, dude. You're also a uh, so. Um, how was the uh, at home learning for you, dude? As as a, as a parent. 
Was that uh, uh, absolutely nuts? I mean, the the public school gave us an iPad, and they said, "Hey, uh, click on this app and click on that app, and then click on this app." And I was like, "Nah, uh-uh. <laughs> I put her in a private school, and now she's learning cursive writing. She's learning German and Spanish, and when she goes back to school, she'll be learning blacksmithing and." All this cool shit at this Austin Waldorf school out here. Shout out to them. It's freaking awesome. Oh, nice. Compared dude. to sitting behind a bubble in school, they have to eat their cafeteria food at their desk and don't get to go outside. Or you can just learn at home from an iPad and just be immersed in apps your entire childhood. I not about that. I'll put myself in a VR headset after she goes to bed, but if she's on an iPad for 30 minutes, I freak out. Uh uh-uh. yeah, yeah. uh. <laughs> you know, you can't do that. You can't do that. Yeah, it's strange. It's strange because I remember, uh, which is why also why I was like, I'm not spending thirty bucks for Tetris because I remember having like a Game Boy, <laughs> and I I remember like, my parents being like, you know, oh, this kid's gonna be on that shit all the time. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. oh, he's taking this with him everywhere from now on out, dude. It, it, it was like my little like uh, safety blanket. I was just like, oh yeah, whatever, fucking Tetris, like, oh yeah, dude. So, um, man, uh, anything you want to uh, you you want to plug before we uh head out to i mean uh the phil Drinder comedy club is coming along we're making three new comedy clubs right now uh we're seeking endorsements and advertisements so we can actually go in there and imagine yourself at the comedy club in virtual reality just holding the bud light whenever you leave virtual reality and you go to the gas station and come back you're probably going to be holding some bud light in real life just to it's that mental tick you know it's so cool because there's so many like there's like it's so many cool ideas and so much cool stuff that could happen. It's like weird. It's like every time I go in there, I'm like, oh man, I wish this was like four months from now, and then and then like four months from now, I'm be like, oh, I wish this it's like four months from now because it's like it's really cool, man. Even in, in the last couple times that I've done it, I've noticed like I haven't like there's been. I mean, I think it's constant improvements, dude. Have you seen Ready Player One? I'm sure you have. Yeah. Uh, did you know that he has a sequel, Ready Player Two? Yeah. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait to read it. Right yesterday. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Ready Player One. I think the uh, one of the Burning Man things is the uh, car from that movie. Well, the oh, yeah, the DeLorean, the DeLorean mix. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, essentially what we've done is we built the first stand-up comedy club inside of the Oasis. And yeah, we're, just, nice. we're just running with that. And, you know, maybe we'll get an acoustic studio and hook it up to the same mall. Or someone's going to build the Oasis, man, sooner or later. Um we're also in Facebook Horizons, so whenever someone gets a beta code to finally go into Facebook Horizons, we've got we've got a comedy club and they're ready to go and perform shows in there. Dude, Facebook Horizons is like taking a walk on the saddest beach. It that's really ever. Is. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very it's too uh, it's shiny. I think the word is shiny and kind of just there. empty and through a rock. Into the water and lonely. Yeah, hopefully we get to change that. There's no events in there right now, so the more people we get in there, we can bring them to a comedy show and then they can log the hell out. You know. Oh, there's a sad rock throwing over at the lake house. I don't know if you. If you <laughs> no, I haven't checked it out yet. Probably won't. Out, listen to fucking REM. Everybody hurts over and over again. Yeah. All right, uh, hey everybody. This is uh, Chris Tinkle. This is uh, Tinkle time. Thank you for uh, listening. And uh, yeah, so this is probably going to be out on the third, probably on uh, Thanksgiving. So awesome. this Saturday, Fail to Render uh, Comedy Club in uh, only on All Space. It's going to be uh, 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. You're on Texas time, which is 9, right? Yep. You're on Texas time. That's why I call it, dude, Texas, Texas time. Because I don't know the other one. It's East Coast, Texas time, and then fuck the other one. <laughs> yeah. Other me. And then uh, California time. All right. So 7 yeah. o'clock California time. If you've never done the VR thing yet. Uh, come, it's just like a real comedy club. Have a seat. It's going to be really fun. Uh, you're, uh, you're on the show. Big Al's on the show. I'm on the yep. show. I don't know who yep. else, but yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be dope. It's going to be awesome. And, it's going to be fun. And, oh, dude, and we didn't talk about the fucking, po- okay, okay. Okay. What? No. Yeah. We already done yet. Cause we didn't talk about your podcast. The, oh the, yeah. The, Jesus Christ. We can, we can just tag them both. I have a, I have a podcast that we're doing in VR, fully in VR. inside of VR. We record it. You have the video. You have the sound. We can rip it. It's kind of technically buggy, but I mean, so far we made the best of it. You were on there, and that was one of our best shows so far. Episode four. It's a. Uh, I mean, so you're all, yeah. It's a live audience, which is what, which is why I'm super into it. It's it's a live studio audience, and so you so like everyone is like behind this wall, dude. And you guys have dude. There's like blunts and that. 
You're downplaying this, bro. There's blunts <laughs> and ashtrays, dude. There so are I, and ashtrays. Gonna, uh, I'm going to, uh, I'll be having my own show on there starting next Wednesday. And I've already written down ideas already that, uh, yeah. yeah, with the smoke. Okay. So, so, so we'll talk off, but I want that, I want that fucking, I want that, I want that green room looking like a Cypress Hill concert at all times. <laughs> we can and do people that. Like, I can't see. It's like, dude, it's part of the experience, man. <laughs> yeah, like, fully immersed or what? <laughs> Dude, remember what I okay so it's so so it's crazy you guys build this world but if you don't basically you guys built this podcast studio but if you walk to the outside of the podcast studio you basically if you took two steps backwards you would fall off oh you'll die yeah you yeah. would fall off the earth so <laughs> it was like a, a two inch ledge so you could get your hand in the door to, to get into the studio and I was like Dude, are they fucking with me? Like, do they want me on this show? Like, okay. <laughs> no, we fixed like, all that I, shit. It's all fixed up. It's so great. But I kept dying and I was like, uh, so, yeah, really fun. But so there's a studio audience. Um, so next Wednesday, seven o'clock, and my first guest is gonna be uh Kevin Avery, which is uh Emmy winner from John Oliver's show. And he also, uh, man, I knew I was gonna do this. He wrote the uh, uh Comedy Central show, he was the uh showrunner and the head of the last show. It was ah uh, forget god damn it dude Alonzo uh -oh. Bowden was it but anyway yeah he's a he's a fucking big deal him and I have been friends a long time uh, we went to uh, Iraq together for the uh, USO tour so we'll probably have some nice. really funny stories about them like letting us shoot guns and uh, Kevin used to have a really funny bit about how he's like dude they didn't check and see if we were okay first they were just like here you guys want to hold these guns and go shoot it's like dude you guys don't know us. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, you yeah. hope we're not gonna do anything fucking sinister, but like, literally, I mean, dude, yeah, dude, I shot a saw rifle, and yeah, I'm not like nice. my family raised us like a bunch of pussies, dude. Like, mm -hmm. like, uh, so I've never no guns, and I've, dude, I, as soon as I put my hand on it, and b by the way, for me, they're like, you lay on your belly like a little bitch. I let everyone yeah. else gonna stand up like big boys. I had to lay on my tummy because I was like smaller than them, so I lay my stomach, and dude, as soon as I put my hand in that gun, dude, I was just like. Oh, I get it, dude. I, I <laughs> dude, as soon as I, I was like, that's the magic, dude. As soon as I did it, and then go, 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 go. So great, dude. Yeah. So, uh, Kevin Avery, uh, he'll be on there and I uh, try to give him maybe call somebody as a special guest. But yeah, that's gonna be really fun. And, uh, that'd be seven o'clock. So, so it's like a block on that Wednesday, right? It's, uh, yep. You guys at, uh, five, then Corey and Kevin at six. Yep. And then Tinkle Time VR, I think is what it's called. Yeah. We'll figure it out. But yeah, that works. I mean, I, I'm just I'm just glad to share the podcast space with everybody because it's so cutting edge and uh, we put some money into it. And uh, it's all about sharing with the community, man, moving forward. That's what I was going to say, dude, walking in. I remember you like, uh, I said something about, I'm all, wait, are those blunts on those ashtrays? And you're like, <laughs> yeah, you're all, do you want more smoke? And I was like, <laughs> I looked yeah. at you like you worked in a fucking dispensary and asked me if I ever tried weed before. I'm like, what? <laughs> do I want more smoke? Yeah, we turn yeah, on the clock then, machines. Like, <laughs> do you remember? You guys turn on, you guys hit the button, you guys turn it on, and then it looked like fucking Kiss was going to come out, dude. <laughs> yeah. Those jets of smoke coming out of the ashtrays, and it was like, and the smoke didn't, it was so real, dude, because the smoke wasn't going away. And then I just remember I was like, oh, I think there's a little bit too much smoke, guys. <laughs> so just like the comedy why. club and like flying around or doing all these different things, we can experiment with the podcast studio. Uh, I'm starting to put everybody's branding next to, next to mine on the wall. So branding is an easy thing to do in there. And then we can just spawn fun. items and play with items. And we're going to get to the point where you can equip the headphones and you can smoke those joints in there and hold the bug light. We're getting there. Oh, it's gonna be so awesome, dude. So so uh that's gonna be a lot of fun, man. Do uh stay there. Uh I'll be right back. Hey Hello? All right. Emergency phone call. All right. Uh, hey, thanks for listening. This is uh, Tinkle Time. You guys have been awesome. Uh, rate, review, and subscribe. And this should be out on iTunes right now. iTunes was being a little bitch, dude. But hopefully now it's going to be... Well, I don't know why I just said that about them. Now they're going to... Okay, whatever. Anyway, hey.
Uh, Chris Tickle Comedy, and uh, you can buy my shit at christicklecomedy.com. I got some sweet Les Desto shirts, and also you can buy my albums there. And uh, all right, Kyle, thanks for doing this, man. Stay right there. Let me, uh, cool. Thanks, man. Board.